Hey, most of you who follow the message of William Branham know what happened in 1963, but I thought I would kind of let you listen about three or four minutes worth of Kent Hovind uh, explaining some things that happened in 1963 that shows you that when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord does indeed raise a standard against it. And as you know, 1963 was the opening of the Word, the seven seals being uh, revealed, and um, I've spoke to Ken Hovind on the phone a few times. He does not believe William Branham, but he's a great guy. I love listening to Ken Hovind. But, uh, so none of the PowerPoint slides and the presentations he's making, of course, is to support something, you know, of Brother Branham's. But I thought it was just amazing. Just watch uh, what all happened in 1963. Arkansas and Louisiana passed laws to require that creation be taught. The court struck it down in both cases. They said, you cannot require that creation be taught. They said the teachers can teach it if they want, but it has to be voluntary on the teacher's part. Even Stephen Gould said, no statute exists in any state to bar instruction in creation science. It could be taught before and it can be taught now. He was commenting on the 1987 Supreme Court decision. What's happened though, the ACLU, the American Communist Lawyers Union, they have tried really hard to spread the propaganda around that you cannot talk about creation in the public schools, and that's just simply not true. It's always been perfectly fine to teach creation in the public schools. There's never been a law against that at all, okay? But if a teacher gets up in front of their class and the teacher says, okay, kid, listen, listen, you started off like a slime and you slowly evolved to a human. You don't need to be a genius to figure out that teaching is going to destroy some kid's faith in the Bible. And anybody that destroys a child's faith better read what Jesus said about that. He said, Whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and he were drowned in the depth of the sea. Anybody that teaches evolution is in trouble when they stand before God. The Bible says, Be not many masters, knowing we shall receive the greater condemnation. It's interesting, though, what happened. Back in the 1950s, the average textbook in America had very little evolution. Two or three thousand words was all. 1957, the Russians beat us in the space race by launching Sputnik, and Americans panicked. How many of you are old enough to remember the panic in America when the Russians were winning the space race? I mean, they had articles in Life magazine, how you can survive fallout. They said the Soviets are ahead of us in science because the Soviets teach evolution. We don't teach it in our schools. I mean, they had articles on how to build your own bomb shelter. People were building them in their backyard, okay, to survive nuclear fallout. Wait a minute. The Soviets are ahead in science because they teach evolution. What does evolution have to do with putting up a satellite? Well, then, in 1959, it was the 100-year anniversary of Darwin's book coming out. And in 1959, Eisenhower asked Congress for a billion dollars to push more evolution into the school system. And he got it. American textbooks were rewritten in the late 50s and early 60s to include more evolution. They called it the Cold War Reconstruction of American Science Education. Our whole science curriculum and other curriculums were rewritten to make sure evolution was taught. And by 1963, the average textbook had 33,000 words about evolution. By 1963, prayer was taken out of our school system. Anybody remember that? Madeline Murray O'Hare? By 1963, we started to see a great rise in premarital sex for every single age bracket. We saw a great rise in uh, sexually transmitted diseases for 10 to 14 year olds. We saw a great rise in unwed birth rates, a 550% increase in pregnancies. The difference is being aborted. Now, one third of all the kids born at the hospital are born to a couple that are not married, illegitimate children. A third of them. Now listen carefully. If you are one of those, this is for you. Timothy was a half-breed that never should have been born. Timothy's mommy was Jewish. His daddy was Greek. The Jews weren't supposed to marry anybody but Jews. Mama disobeyed. Timothy's the result. But he wanted to serve God, and God said, I'll take you, son. He wrote two books in your Bible. So if your parents messed up, you shut your mouth and quit your whining, and you go serve God with your life, okay? There's no excuses. God will use anybody, okay? The number of unmarried couples living together has increased radically since 1963. God's word hasn't changed. He said, thou shalt not commit adultery. He said, whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. Jesus said, if you even look and lust, you've committed adultery already in your heart. 
By the way, ladies, that's why it's important how you dress, okay? My daddy always said, if you're not in business, don't advertise. Okay. Divorce rates have gone crazy in this country. Child abuse is up 2,300%. Illegal drug use up 6,000%. Violent crimes nearly a 1,000% increase. I'm not that old, you know, but I remember the days when you did not have to lock your house. Anybody remember those days? And you left the keys in the ignition all the time. You never took them out because you might lose them. And you go to the average high school, and half the pickup trucks in the parking lot had a loaded rifle hanging in the back window. And nobody got shot in school in those days, did they? 